Welcome to the warm-up, I'm Stu Wakeford, he's Marcus Gale, he's Carly Osborne and just like last year we're going to be bringing you half an hour of pure Brentford FC every week for your viewing pleasure and I tell you what it's going to be a hell of a season on the pitch so we've got to make sure that we're making it fun off the pitch for you guys too, starting with a bit of this. New season means a new trim, so myself and the magic man Paul Merson hit the barbers and chat about what we've got to look forward to this season. If you're a Brentford fan, you're thinking, no, I want more than that, but... Yeah, I do, but yeah, but, but, no, you know, but I know what you mean. But do you know what I mean? I mean, you don't, you don't want a Sheffield United last no. season. Mercer's got a foot in both camps, but these lot definitely don't. Arsenal Fan TV sat down with Carly to give us the Oppo's view on the season curtain raiser. I know that this is going to be a tough game. This is going to be um, a game which you guys are well prepared for. And if that weren't enough, new signing Johan Wister chats to us for the first time as a Brentford player. It's difficult to say, but uh, when I was young, I look, um, you know, uh, Thierry Henry, Didier Drogba. Lads, I tell you what, we have set the bar for the first show. How are we going to keep this up? No filler, time is precious, so let's get straight into it. Friday night, this place, under the lights, just about. First ever match in the Premier League. It's a sellout against one of the big boys. How are we both feeling? I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I don't think I'm going to sleep the night before. <laughs> Um, just to have the first Premier League match under lights with a full house, just what the crowd wanted. So, perfect start. It's going to be some occasion. Like, I, I cannot wait. It's going to be unbelievable. Fans are back in full house. We're against Arsenal, with, you know, which is a massive club. It's the right way for Brentford to open their Premier League season. This place is going to be rocking. We've got a job as fans, haven't we, on Friday? And I know we're going to bring it. And there's no, that's one thing I've got no doubt about, that this place is going to be buzzing. We've got to channel that excitement into the pitch, but at the same time, it is about three points because it's got a bit of a cup final feel to this, but it ain't a cup final. We're here on merit and we need three points on Friday night, don't we? Well, the pressures are big now. You know, every game is absolutely huge for the club um, and we've just got to go out there and perform. Yeah. As you said, look, it's not a cup final, but it's going to feel like a cup final for 38 games of this season. So we have to be mentally prepared, physically prepared to, to go through this. Well, that's what we think. Should we get, see what the oppo thinks, shall we? Carly, you made some new mates this week, didn't you, Arsenal <laughs> fan did. TV? Yes, I did. I did. I sat down with Robbie and Turkish. So nice guys. Be, uh, that was good fun. Yeah? Should you have a little watch? Yeah, let's have a watch. Let's see what they think. Arsenal friends! <laughs> So, gents, the big kickoff is Friday. The Premier League is back. Arsenal versus Brentford. How are you feeling about the game, boys? Excited, you know. Now, now that I'm here as well in the stadium, I'm really excited because um, the whole world is going to be looking upon this game because it's the first game to kick off the season. With Arsenal personally, I think we're a bit, it just seems like we're a bit unprepared for the start of the season. But on the other hand, I'm excited. And remember, it's the first game where fans are going to be back in the Premier League for us for what, nearly a year and a half, you know what I mean? So, and the first away game that I would have been to for God knows how long. So I'm excited and, you know, new ground, new stadium. It's going to be good. It's been a lovely stadium, by the way. Yeah, even walking in here today, it's, you know, it's been a while. Yeah. So even walking in, there's no fans here, it's empty, but it's still a reminder of what I've been missing. And that's the balance here, because with Arsenal, yeah, they haven't really been filling us with much hope and, you know, ambition and belief, but we still miss this. We still miss support and attending every week. So I am excited. Mm. That underwhelmed at the same time with what we're doing. How much do you know about Brentford and kind of, you know, their squads and, and what you think they'll bring? I remember I was uh, at the, the World Cup in Russia. I remember I met your chairman out there. Yeah. We was in the same hotel, yeah. And um, he was telling me he got a bit of a love for us, or he did as well. I remember him saying that. And, um, you know, we spoke about Brentford and he spoke about what you guys were doing over here and how ambitious a club it was. And I remember sort of after I spoke to him, I kind of, was sort of always had one eye on Brentford after that to see how they're doing. 
And I, I thought you guys would come up the previous season, you know what I mean? And I was really shocked that time when I was watching the final and, you know, you lost that to Fulham. But I, I kind of looked on it and I thought, you know, the way they play, the way they go about doing things, the way it's organised, it's only a matter of time, I feel, before we'll see Brentford in the Premier League. I'm really pleased for him. I'm really pleased for the Brentford fans. Obviously, we've seen players like Ivan Tony, and we hear a lot about Brentford's methodology, about how they bring in players, and we see some of the players even that they sold. And, you know, they're playing in the Premier League that look good. I know that this is going to be a tough game. This is going to be um, a game which you guys are well prepared for. So. Yeah, I think I've got a lot of respect for, for what you guys have done here. I feel like a lot's changed in, outside looking in in the last like, three, four, five years maybe with Brentford. You're hearing a lot more about them and even down to the business you guys have been doing. Like last summer, Oli Watkins, Ben Rama, big sales, but you've managed to, you know, find the replacements and very good replacements at like that. Tony just broke the record for the championship, yep. you know, so that, good business, good vision, good direction. And here you are, new stadium in the Premier League. Based on obviously there what you, what you know about Brentford, do you think the players will be kind of as aware? Do you think they'll be as ready for this game on Friday? I don't think this is going to be one of those games where Arsenal are going to go into it underestimating who they're playing because they're a new team in the division or that. I, I think it's well documented what Brentford have done. Like Turkish just said, the type of players you've sold, we've seen, I mean, Oli Watkins terrorised us last year for Villa, right? So I don't think we're going to underestimate um, the type of players that you're going to have. It's a really tough game to start the Premier League for us. Brand new stadium. Your fans are going to be, they're going to be buzzing for this game, you know? I don't think we're going to underestimate Brentford, but I think there's a lot of doubt within our squad, yeah. within the players, within the manager, within the club overall. And that could be an obstacle in itself. But yet again, we're going into the season where people are debating whether we are stronger than the end of last season or not, which is mad to, to think about when we finish eighth. Your pre-season so far, um, you know, there's been a, been, it's been up and down, hasn't it, I think. So, you know, how do you feel pre-season's been and, and who's stood out for you? Partey definitely, Ben White and Lokonga have as well. Um, not necessarily who stood out, but Oba worries me just because of some of the chances he's missed. You know, our strikers don't seem to be in that form that we need them to be in moving into the season, Lacazette included as well. I've seen a lot of the same problems from last year. As the Turkish said, Partey, uh, I liked he was looking really good. Sambi Lokonga, um, Ben White, they've all looked good. There's been some good bits, but you're not inspired really by what you've seen. But then having said that, I've seen Arsenal in pre-season, we beat them Bayern Munich, we beat them PSG, and then we started off the season badly, you know what I mean? So maybe I was thinking to myself, maybe don't look too much into it. Yeah. But I haven't been overly, you know what I mean? I've not seen enough to get me thinking, yeah, you know. Well, look, the season's close and obviously the, the first game is on Friday. Robbie, go first. What's the prediction for Friday's game? I think Arsenal are going to win. I, th I just feel that the occasion's going to be huge. Last season, away from home, we were decent. I think it suited us more away from home the way we played. There's more freedom could, in your play, would you say? Yeah, and we could just counter a bit more. I'll go 2-1 Arsenal. Close game, very tight game. I will be very nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to coming here. Brilliant. Turkish? Yeah, you know, I was going to lean towards a 2-1. Yeah. But I think I'm going to go for a 2-2. Two -two. I go for the draw, OK. Yeah, I just think that we're underprepared again. Yeah. And I look at the, you know, the lack of creativity and that's going to become a problem. Yeah. Gabriel missing. That's a problem. Remember last season, the first game? Yeah. That was against Fulham. They just come up. Yeah, that's I mean, the only difference was there were no fans there. Yeah. But we battered them. And I thought that was going to be a really tough game. But I think this will be because of fans are here. It's a different proposition. Yeah. You know? I think Pepe will, you know, that's the one I'm looking at Friday. Yeah. I think if Pepe has a good game, we win. Yeah. But I think, you know, it really depends on him this Friday. Brilliant. Well, gents, listen, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us at the stadium. And Pleasure. I wish you all the best for the rest of the season, just not Friday, obviously. Aside from that, come the on. The same with us. <laughs> you know, well, I, I really, you know, I really want Brentford to stay up. I really want Brentford to do well. But as you said, not this Friday. Not, <laughs> you, you know, you get off to a bad start and then after that, you fly after that. You know what I mean? It'd be brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers. Robbie Turkish, thanks a lot. No man. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank thank you. Love that, mate. Oi, we wasted you last season, <laughs> didn't we? Um, you know what? People say a lot about Arsenal fans here, but they get a lot of stick. But we were there that day. They are proper sound guys. 
and they've got a lot of respect for Brentford actually. There's no big club egos there and say what you want about them, I think you know what? Mm -hmm. Take one face value when you meet people, I thought they were proper sound guys, wouldn't they? I think they was very honest with what they said. Um, and that's good as well. I think you have to be realistic as fans as well. Yes, they're a massive club, got a great history, and they're coming up against Brentford, who are the 50th new team in the Premier League. Who are we? We're the new kids on the block. But I think there was some mutual respect going both ways. And they weren't convincing and compelling in their confidence. I know Robbie said that he thinks they'll win it. Turkey thinks it'll be a draw. But it's, it's a hard one to predict, Carly, isn't it? It is a hard one to predict. Arsenal seem a bit unprepared and like they said, they, they feel they're a little bit unprepared. Mm. I think Brentford, you know, they're, they're, they're very prepared, I think. Um, and it's also, it's also that thing is, you know, Arsenal coming to Brentford isn't, isn't exciting for mm. Arsenal players necessarily, but Brentford playing against Arsenal at home with fans back, you know, the, the, the players getting a chance to play in the Premier League. They've been dreaming about this since they were kids and they've now finally mm. got this, this chance. For them, the adrenaline, the excitement, that's going to be huge. Yeah. And I just, I think, you know, if Brentford start right and, and put Arsenal on the back foot from early, I think Brentford could really mm -hmm. cause a shock on the opening day. And we said that a bit about pre-season. We've mm -hmm. had a decent pre-season. They haven't really. That, that convincing win against Watford, but apart from that, not great. Mm -hmm. Does that matter, Marcus? It doesn't, it doesn't. I've seen teams in the past where they've been unbeaten yeah. and start the season poorly. Yeah. And I've seen teams that have been poorly in pre-season and then do the opposite have a great start so um, the indicators for us I think has it, been good the preparation the, the quality of matches as well the standard of it I think that's really going to help us start in a, in a good fashion Robbie said there that they actually like playing away from home and last year they, their away form was really good but he said it suits them because they can play on the counter and stuff can they do that here like I'm not being funny are the Arsenal fans going to tolerate them not having the ball against us do you see what I mean? And also, if we have all the ball here, that's going to get this place rocking mm. and that's going to get that relentless wave and wave of energy and, and the relentlessness on the pitch. So, can Arsenal set up that way or do they have to come at us a little bit? Because I don't see how they can sit there and go, oh yeah, on this pitch, mm. Brentford, you have all the ball. And, and I, I'm not saying that that's because of stature of size, but can you do that as a, as, a, as a club that size? Let a newly promoted team have all the ball against you on the opening day of the season, Carly? I, me personally, I don't think Arsenal can afford to do that. Um, even through pre-season, there's still a divide between the fans. Um, you know, there was, I think Arteta out was trending after the, the Spurs <laughs> game. Um, so there's, a, there's already a massive pressure on Arsenal and on Arteta in particular. And I think if he, if he comes up here and sets his team to sit um, and let Brentford dominate the ball, I can't see the, I can't see the Arsenal fans being, being very happy with that. So, for me, I don't think I, I don't think they will play, you know, counter-attacking football um, against against us. It will be interesting to see. Um, but, like I said, for me, we know the quality Arsenal have. Arsenal have yeah. got unbelievable players. They've got unbelievable quality. They've been in the Premier League for years and years and years. They've won things. You know, they're serial winners. So we know what Arsenal have and what they can bring. But I just don't think they're fully prepared and ready yet. And if Brentford with the fans and stuff like that. This stadium is going to be rocking. So I know they've played away, but they've played away and done well away when there's not been any fans there. Now fans are back. There's a different pressure. Mm. Yeah. And it's still, you know, it's, this stadium is still very close. You hear every word. You know, you, you feel every single thing that the fans feel because it's so close. It, it, we'll see how Arsenal deal with that if they don't start well. How do we play it then, Marcus? We stick to our blueprint. Yeah. We've got a very successful blueprint. It's seen us good in the last two campaigns, really. Um, I've got a little saying, hard work beats talent when talent refuses to work hard. So we've got the talent, we know we're going to work hard. That's where the question is with Arsenal. Are their talented players really going to work hard to get them into the, the start of their season? That's down to them to, to, to answer. But I think from our perspective, I think we're well prepared. We're a fit side. We seem to get stronger in the games as they go on. So um, we stick to what we, we're, we're good at doing. And, um, Let's enjoy this ride, guys. Yeah. <laughs> let's enjoy it, let's enjoy it. Look, like we said, they have got some talented players, but so have we. And we added to our arsenal, ourselves, <laughs> with the signing of Johan Wisser this week from Lorient. And here's his first chat as a Brentford player with our very own Luke Gregory. Is there anyone you watched growing up that played in the Premier League that you kind of looked up to and, and wanted to be like? It's difficult to say, but uh, 
When I was young, I look, um, you know, uh, Thierry Henry, DJ Drogba. Now, for me, uh, I love um, Sadio Mane. Okay. Mohamed Salah, yes, very good, very good, very good player. And a um, lot of players got good, but uh, I love the Sadio Mane because it, it, uh, it's like me. So is that one you're looking forward to coming up against this year, playing Liverpool and potentially having Sadio Mane on the same pitch as you? Yes, it's good, it's good because, uh, you know, you watch him, you watch him and uh, you, see, you know he's a very, very good player, very big player and uh, I hope the, 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 we can beat them, I hope. Lads, Wissa joins alongside three other new signings, Chris Adjar, Frank Onyeka and Miles per Harris. Uh, in the past, we've seen some clubs come up, not mentioning any names of some local sides that maybe have done this, <coughs> and brought in a lot of players, invested a lot of money. We haven't seen that upheaval in the squad, not a lot of outs either, um, not a lot of incomings. Um, why do you think we've not made a ton of signings, Carly, and, and what do you think is the best approach? Um, I think Brentford haven't made a ton of signings because I think they believe in the squad and the players that they that got them there in the first place. I think they've been very good. Brentford recruitment has been good for years um, and I think they've been very good again at pinpointing the right players that are going to come in and make a big difference. Um, and for me, I think that's the best way to do it. I think sometimes when clubs get to the Premier League, they get overexcited and they spend millions and millions and millions on buying hit this player there, that player there, end up with loads of players. There's no, co no cohesion in the team. Mm -hmm. Um, and the team doesn't, doesn't flow how you want it to flow. Whereas I feel like with Brentford, how they're doing things, they're making sure they bring the right players in the, with the right character in order to you know, um, come into the group and, and settle as quick as they can. What have you made of the business, Marcus? So been, far, because obviously the window's still open. Yeah, I've been very happy with what we've done so far. Uh, I think obviously we lost a couple of players, senior players, but um, they have a, a great emotional connection to the club. So it might have been hard for the fans to to see that process happen, but that's part of football. But the players that have come in, they fit the model, they fit within our structure. They're all good guys, great yeah. talented players. And it's, it's, it's been needed. Yeah. Those sort of signings have been needed. Someone in midfield that can get up and down, snap into those tackles, yeah. break up play. Yeah, we, we know we needed that. So yeah. we've got that with Frank in there. Um, Christopher, again, a great signing in terms of athleticism, defending, he's great on the ball. We can expect to see him build our attacks as well from that yeah. position. So I'm, I'm well happy with what we've done. It's been lovely not having a summer just looking who is trying to buy our players and nick them off <laughs> yeah. us, isn't it? Um, Carly, you played with one of our... Uh, this is mad. You played with one of our new Why is he laughing at this? He's oh, that is not that old, to be fair. Chris <laughs> Adger, um, you played with him at Kilmarnock, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did, oh, I did, I did. Kilmarnock friend, Arsenal fan TV friend. <laughs> I've got a few um, friends out there. Yeah, unbelievably. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. what, what was he like back then, Chris? Um, oh, you could see the potential that he has, um, or that he had then, and obviously he's gone on and, and you know grown as a player. He's been fantastic. Um, to be fair, when I was when I was there and we played alongside each other, he probably helped me more than I helped him. And how old was he? I think, I don't know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I think he was like 19 or something. Um, he was 17. I wasn't. I was. I just come back from an injury. Of, oh, of course. Shock. Yeah. <laughs> so go. there you go. I wasn't, you said, fully, I wasn't fully fit. Yes, I do. Yes. What? Yeah. I messaged him <laughs> a few months ago. Oh yeah, get a reply. Yeah, about, about a Blue chick in it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what have we got ourselves in? Now nah, listen, you've got uh, we've got ourselves a really good player. Quality player, great technically. Um, mm -hmm. He's he's a leader as well. For such a young player as a leader, he was captain of um, Start at yeah, 16, yeah. Yeah, 16. So, you know, you've got a, a born leader um, and someone that will he's not afraid to take on a challenge. Like yeah. he won't he won't come into this and, and, and be fearful. He'll be ready to play, he'll be ready to go, he'll prepare well, he's a real good professional. And I think Brentford fans are going to grow mm. to love him as he, as he settles more and more. And um, that he'll become a fan favourite for sure. Amazing. Well, one man who is a fan favourite already. <laughs> Quickest fan favourite ever, Frank Onyeka. Where do you want your statue, mate? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. I, I, I love him. I, I, I want him on the back of my shirt already. Frank the Tank. I mean, yeah, I did get the dance wrong. It's that, I know. But <laughs> unbelievable signing already, it seems. Yeah, he, he's going to connect with the fans, as we saw last weekend. Um, what a signing. Yeah. I think it just it gives us that energy that we've been craving for at times. Another man that we haven't seen loads of so far in preseason, but I've been lucky enough to see it in training, Miles Pert Harris. I know you know him mm -hmm. well well, Marcus. Um I tell you what, what he's just one of those players you just love. What he's elegant on the ball, by the mm -hmm. way. St George's he's hit one top bins. Off oh, everyone turned around and went, 
sorry, where'd that come from? <laughs> Unbelievable. A local lad like yourselves as well. We haven't had one for a while. Uh, adds a little bit to it, doesn't it, Marcus? I think it's a great story that we've signed a local lad, someone that used to sit and watch games at Griffin Park as well back in the day. But um, yeah, looking forward to seeing him perform. It's going to take a little time. He's still very young, 18 yeah. years of age. Can't expect too much of him for this season, but it's the building blocks of greatness, I think, that's coming for him. So he's just got to take his time, get through the training, get the cup matches in, hopefully, yeah. and um, just develop at the right level for him. I love the signings. You got excited, but look, we're, we're, we're bigging up our chances here, but we are biased, mm. didn't we? We are a little bit biased. 100%. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be biased. <laughs> a little bit. Why, why should we be biased? We're Brentford <laughs> fans. So I wanted to know what the pundits are thinking. Someone that's been there, done it, played at this level, who's an elite international footballer. It was only one man for it. This man's played for both clubs on Friday night. He is, of course, our favourite panellist on Soccer Saturday, the magic man, Paul Merson. Him and I had our air cuts and a little chat about what we can expect in the season ahead. Merth, season starts Friday, thought I'd get Premier League ready. Before we start, who had the worst haircuts out of the lads that you've You know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick my neck out and probably say me. I mean, nah. I, had a, I had a wave, I had the old curtains, I had some yeah, bad I haircuts. Mind That's come back in though now. Yeah, I know, but it weren't in when I was. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to cane me for mine. When yeah, I oh, used to slaughter you. But Boy. sort it out now, I've started yeah. coming here. As we say, look, season starts Friday. Two of your old clubs, yeah. we cling on to that. The yeah, no, 100%, club. it's where it all started, was at Brentford. I mean, that was, yeah, massive, massive for me, that was. I always follow Brentford scores, always. Well, look, when the fixtures come out, I was like, that's the perfect fixture for us. We wanted to play one of the big boys. Out of anyone, I think they were the ones that, you know, at home, I was looking forward to that we might have a little bit of a chance. What do you think about it? When I was playing at Arsenal, the one thing I didn't want to play at the start of the season was the promoted team, because it's a leveller. You know, you want to play the promoted teams at Christmas when they've got a few injuries, it's hit home how hard the league is. The teams that come up, they have to work, they have to play 100% week in, week out to maybe get a result. You know, how many times Man City play at 70% and win a football match? You've obviously spent most of your career in this league, but you also played in the second tier and Pompey, what is the difference, mate, between the, the two levels? I know the obvious thing is to say better players, but there must be more to it than that. Better players in better positions. You know, Tony, you, how many goals did he get last year? 33. 33 goals, wow. I mean, he's going to be working on straps for a lot of games. You know, there'll be no mistakes in this league. Right. You know, there's no one falling asleep on the halfway line. You're one-on-one -on -one with a goalie. Balls ain't coming in the box and two centre halves are picking their route. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, this is proper, this is football. Every position's better. You know, the right back will be pacey for, in the Premier League. The left back will be pacey. You know, the centre halves, are, they can run. Yeah, it's a massive jump. Playing for a good team in the Championship is a walk in the park. Obviously last year, two of the three that come up went back down. What do teams that come up do well, the ones that stay up and what what do teams like West Brom and Fulham who went down not do well? Don't get behind the eight ball. Got to start well. You know, you start this league and you play 12 games and you've got six points, you're up against it. Surely they got a plan, the management of how many points they want after the first 10 games. And then I think you go from there. Can you have a go if you're a newly... Do you have to, do you have to change the way you play? Because obviously we were pretty expansive last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it depends really just how long you hold your, your, your cards for. Well, we see it with Norwich, didn't we? We see it at Norwich. Norwich were like, you know, all the neutrals, me, one of them, like, ah, oh, brilliant, Norwich. Wow, like, they come up, they played the same way as the championship. They had a go, give a go. They're getting dinked five at home. They're getting beat four away. They're getting beat sixes. They're getting beat fives. It's like the Leeds way, you know, Leeds, everyone, everybody's like, oh, Leeds are great. Everybody loves watching Leeds, they're great. Oh, look at the way they play. Do you think them Leeds fans want to go to Old Trafford and start getting beat 6-2? Beat, beat and everybody else is going, oh, they're brilliant to watch. Yeah. They ain't having that, no chance. And that's where you've got to weigh it up at the end. The neutral loves it. I love watching Brentford. I like Brentford anyway, but I like watching it because I know what I'm getting with Brentford. Yeah. I know I'm going to watch a football match. I know they're going to open the game up. They're going to have a right go. 
and whatever happens, you know what I mean? They fancy themselves to beat anybody. For us, we've had it lucky for, I know we've, we've had that heartbreak of losing the playoffs, but. Oh, but you know, you go away, years. you know, you go, you go and you're going away games, yeah? Driving up that motorway, wherever it may be, and you know you've got a chance. You know yeah. you've got a chance. Yeah. You know, you're driving up to the Etihad this season, and you're just going up there to test the sandwiches on the motorway, really, <laughs> let's be honest. You know, it, it, let's be honest. Yeah. It, you know, it don't matter how well they play, they can have the best game of their life, they could get dinked five. I worry for Watford, I worry for Norwich, I do. I don't know, I just got this feeling about Brentford. I just think, I think they're going to surprise a few teams. I mean, it's horrible, but if they finish 17th, they've had an unbelievable season. Yeah. Which is, you know, you, if you're a Brentford fan, you're thinking, no, I want more than that, but... Yeah, I do, but yeah. But, <laughs> but, no, you know, but I know what you mean. But do you know what I mean? I mean, you don't, you don't want a Sheffield United last nah. season. No, nah, no. Nah, and nah. that can happen. I always weigh it up with the Premier League. I, I look at teams and I go, right, who could get in their team? Who could get in their team? And most of the time with teams that come up, very rare you play and anybody can. Tony, Pinnock, uh, Emery. And then you've got the lad who's coming from Celtic, who I think... He's a good player. Yeah. You know what I mean? The lad from France could be anything. Yeah. Could be anything. You know, who knows? The classic thing everyone says is, oh, in the Premier League, you get more time on the ball. Is that a load of... Yeah, no, no. I, would, I, would, I, would, I would agree. I would agree. It's it, a lot more than the championship. Yeah. Because the championship, it is. It's like, you know, there's a, what I call a lot of dogged players. Do you know what I mean? Midfield players that are going to, you know, rat you, like be around you, close you down, get in your face. Championship's a lot. A lot more physical, I would say, than the, than the Premier League. But, you know, Tony, 33 goals. Oh, wow. I mean, if he gets 15 goals this season, he should get knighted. That, I mean, that's, what you, that's, that's how hard it is. That's how hard it is. If he does, do you think England? I like him. I like him. He reminds me of Ian Wright. I see him get goals last season. I see him get a goal at Nottingham Forest away. For me, goal of the season. Well, it's come goal out, of yeah, the season. He's smashed up the field. He's running, he's looked, he got again, looked again, and he knows where the goal is, he just slid it in. I'm like, that was Ian Wright. It was Ian, I played with Ian Wright. It, it reminded me of Ian Wright. He loves scoring goals. He's got great movement. I, I don't see why not. I don't. He's got good movement. And if you want to play international level, you have to have good movement, and he's yeah. got that. You've got me excited for it, mate. In a word then, will they all be Premier League footballers next season? I'm going to stick my neck out. i just got a feeling. When you've got someone like that who can put the ball in the back of the net and he doesn't need a lorry load of chances, it's MasterCard. It's priceless. So <laughs> for me, <laughs> I think for me, I'm going to say they stay up. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Stu. Sure. Nice to see you again, mate. And you, mate. Same yeah. there, yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, boys? Fresh trim? It looks good, mate. Speaking yeah. of fresh trim, though, you mentioned obviously Mark Perks had a goal at St George's. You did something at St George's. Now, right, moving you? on. Yeah, I did the initiation thing. Hey, yeah, yeah. That. hey, short show, short show. Hold up, hold up. Initiation. We need to. Luke, clip it Luke, up, mate. Clip that up and get that in. Let's see his initiation. If you got the money, I think it would be funny. Uh oh. To take your girl and spend a bit of your cash for me. Because then she might be happy. No longer lonely. Uh oh. And I can take a rat the next day for pretty much free. All the boys and girls they go, da dee do da, dee do da, da 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 da. Yes, right, well done, you've had your fun. Um, right, before we go on, I'm ignoring that. Uh, massive thank you to Kieran and Viv at Jimmy Marham's in Swickenham. I mean, the magic man is a magician on the pitch, but those lot are magicians with the Clippers. If anyone can make me look half decent, think what they can do to your lid. So get down there for your air cuts in Church Street, Twickenham. Um, right. Merce didn't dress it up, which I loved. He was brutally honest with me. Um, he loves what we're doing, he is backing us, but as he said, Carly, this is a different ball game in this league, isn't it? It is a different ball game in this league. Um, you know, the, the players you're playing against, the clubs you're playing against, mm. it's, it's the best of the best. So Brentford are going to have to be on their toes. They're going to have to make sure they're well prepared. Concentration is going to be the biggest thing. One mistake. And, and, you know, clubs will punish you. It's a little bit different in the Championship. You know, you might get a chance here or there or get away with it. But in the Premier League, it's not, that's not going to be the same thing. So the boys just, and listen, they'll know that, but the boys need to make sure they're prepared. Mm. Um, the club is prepared. And now it's just about putting that out there on the pitch in front of millions and millions of people and showing how good of a player you are. Well, look, it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to be making sure we're bringing the fun to you guys. We need to get out and about this year, don't we, guys? We want to get the fans involved. We need to bring back the challenges. Um, but for now, that's all we've got. 
this week, unfortunately. I feel like normal service is resuming. Got you lot back with me. Yay. Got sellouts. I've missed all of this. Before we go, though, there is a new man in town with regards to the program. Sam Marshall has taken over from Chris Deacon, and you can get your match programs here at the stadium or online. Look at this masterpiece of a cover that he's put together. There's some great features this week. Christian Norgard with an absolutely superb interview. So get involved with that, peoples. Um, right, match day tomorrow night. Get down here nice and early. I saw online some people saying about, let's make this a wall of colour for the boys when they walk out. We know you're going to be bringing the noise. I cannot wait. It is going to be a hell of a special night. Let's make sure we do our bit, which I know you will. Come on then, boys. You Reds!